When magnets quarrel, the realm trembles and commoners bleed. My beloved Bohemia has been enveloped by a grim shadow. Led by the devious and cruel Heinrich of Rosenberg, some of our more ambitious lords have formed the so-called Union of Nobility and deposed King Wenceslaus. In a world governed by God and greed, it seems that not even monarchs are safe. Now I too have been swept up by this chaos. They call me Jan Zischke for the eye that I lost in my youth. For most of my life I tended to my family's small estate in Trotsnova, while all around me our homeland slowly went to the dogs. Once I inherited the land, I sold it to seek my fortune in Prague, where I became a retainer of the court. Now, with no king to serve and enemies closing in on all sides, I must once more forge a new life for myself. Having gathered what little I own, I set out into the country. There, in this vibrant land of verdant forests, majestic mountains, and rushing rivers, I shall seek out those bold men who would join me in a desperate battle against this foul tyranny. My enemies take me for a fool, mocking me as one-eyed Zizka. But it is they who cannot see. Like the one-eyed god of whom the men in the far north tell tales, I have a talent for the art of war. It is strangely gratifying to destroy the livelihoods of those who have extinguished your own. Yet. Life on the road as a hired sword is perilous. When you walk the edge of a knife, any error may prove fatal. While I was busy raising the Rosenberg fortress to a smoldering ruin, Heinrich's forces captured a mercenary band led by my own brother. For refusing to give us up, he was cruelly slain along with his men. I came too late to rescue him, and my rash decision left me chained in a cell, awaiting my grim fate. I can only pray to God that I might prove as steadfast and unyielding in the face of torment and death as my brother was. Just as all hope fades, an angel swoops in to deliver the desperate from the abyss. Such is the way of things. Jan Sokol, my patron and benefactor, is now also my savior. The generous man who backed my expeditions exhorted King Wenceslaus, now restored to the throne, to demand that I be spared from a horrific death. After securing my release, Sokol bestowed yet another honor upon me, and made me an officer in his army of swords. Now, I march at the head of that force. But for now, our sights are not set on Bohemia. To the northeast, a savage conflict has erupted between two age-old enemies. The Teutonic Order, a fanatical brotherhood of Crusader Knights, wages war upon the growing Kingdom of Poland. King Władysław Jagiełło of Poland, still known as Jogaila by his Lithuanian relatives, has taken the initiative and struck deep into Teutonic territory. Knowing that his Polish and Lithuanian army is not enough to achieve his ambitions, he has enlisted our famed company of Bohemian mercenaries. We are among the best swords in Europe, but the Teutonic Knights and their Crusader allies are a formidable match. On the plains near Grunwald, courage will yield coin, or else a glorious death. Our victory was terrible, but great. For decades, Travelers will be stunned by the graveyard left by this clash of arms, the greatest in living memory. With the Teutonic army crushed, we lost no time in pressing our advantage. The castle of Rodzinia quickly fell to our forces. 
but this triumph came at a tragic cost. My patron, Jan Sokol, who had become almost like a second father to me, perished of poison. A base fate unworthy of such a marvelous leader. A joyous affair it was for the Polish king and his allies, but for us, it was a melancholy end. We now march home to our beloved Bohemia, pockets lined with coin, but hearts bitter with the sorrow of loss. Despite my skill as a commander, I cannot say that I am a great man. But I was fortunate to be alive at the same time as one, and even luckier to join his ranks. That man was the reformer, Jan Hus. Hus saw through the hypocrisies of our leaders and criticized them openly. The clergy and nobility, he said, exploited the common folk and denied them the wine in the holy act of communion. He was fearless, and the Pope was terrified of him. Hus was charged with heresy, and the Holy Roman Emperor Sigismund pledged him safe passage to Constance to defend himself. But the foul knave reneged on his word and handed Hus over for execution. Resolute to the last, Hus remained true to his cause even as the flames took him. The tidings of Hus's brutal end sent Bohemia into a frenzy. With unbridled rage, we Hussites stormed the town hall in Prague and hurled royalist officials through its windows. Powerless to contain the chaos, King Wenceslaus died of shock, causing the hated Sigismund to lay claim to the throne. Now, as we prepare for all-out war, some Hussites have journeyed to the south and rebuilt an abandoned fortress into the citadel of Tabor. I march to join them, but our route is fraught with peril. A league of ruthless noblemen known as the Iron Lords have sworn death to any Hussite that they meet, and most of our army consists of untrained peasants, men and even some women who have never seen a day of battle. If we are to survive an onslaught of armored knights, these untrained commoners will have to turn wagons into weapons and fight in a way never seen before. On the marshy plains of Sudomierz, a rabble of peasants became a disciplined army. Crouched behind a wall of wagons, 400 Hussites broke charges of knights with volleys of crossbows and hand cannons before charging into the fray with flails fashioned from farm tools. As castle after castle fell, we exacted our grim vengeance. Only one man survived our sack of sedlets, a lord to whom we offered freedom on the condition that he lop off the heads of the other five noblemen standing beside him. Within the smithies and arsenals of the Iron Lords lay enough weapons to equip a small army. As my Hussites took these arms in their hands, I watched a force of commoners begin to realize the previously unimaginable. With faith, discipline, and my astute leadership on the battlefield, the Hussite movement could defy knights, nobles, and even an emperor. Bloodied and battle-hardened from our defeat of the Iron Lords, my Hussites were not content merely with surviving within the thick walls of Tabor. Knowing that our enemies would soon renew their efforts, we moved north to seize the golden city of Prague, jewel of Bohemia and its seat of power. Straddling the Vultava River, Prague is not easily defended. We hold all of the city on the East River bank, but enemy forces have overrun the sector across the river to the west. The glorious Charles Bridge that connects the two will soon become a bloody battleground. 
Emperor Sigismund, the man responsible for Hus's death, leads an army of crusaders into Bohemia, vowing to wipe out the so-called Hussite heresy. It is the ultimate irony for an oath-breaker to claim the moral high ground, but not unexpected from a snake like Sigismund. His forces seek to encircle the city and suffocate us within our walls. This cannot happen, so we will array our wagons and make our stand on Witkov Hill. These fanatical crusaders can keep Rome for all I care, but they will never claim our beloved Prague. Into the battle line for Hus and dearest Bohemia! A drawback of a comfortable, noble life, or even a life of crusading against disorganized heathens, is that you become unaccustomed to true adversity. As they faced our new, unconventional battle tactics, the armies of Sigismund were a relic of a bygone age, and they melted away like snow in the sweltering heat of the summer sun. Failing to break through our line of wagons, the enemy forces were hurled back by a fierce counterattack. We drove them to the edge of a precipice, and then over it. Sigismund will return, I am sure. But for now, we have humiliated him. One image from the battle is etched into my mind. That of a fearless woman who led a defiant charge in the heat of battle, martyring herself in defense of our cause. Her name may be unknown, but her legend will live on forever. As I suspected, even after being humiliated time and again, Emperor Sigismund is still determined to quench the fire started by the great Jan Hus. That two-faced scoundrel invades Bohemia once more with an army of crusaders. I would shed a tear for my homeland, but I no longer have the means. As we besieged Roby Castle, an arrow took my last good eye, ripping away my vision for good. Mercifully, Providence intervened and left my keen wit intact. I am blind, but I see the future clearly. We must deal a crushing blow to Sigismund's army before he can become entrenched for the winter. The bird first out of bed is the earliest fed, as it were, and Sigismund's wit is softened with delusions of grandeur. Our first target is Kutnahora, a town famed for its silver deposits, but infamous for the local nobility's custom of hurling Hussites down mine shafts. Soon retribution shall be meted out to these fiends for their cruelty to our brethren. Sigismund is not alone, however. Riding with him is the fiery Zavisha the Black, our former comrade at Grunwald and bane of the Teutonic Order. I shall spare Zavisha for old time's sake. But any other invading scum can expect justice from the barrel of a firearm and the head of a mace. I may be blind, but my mind's eye sees all. And there are few things quite so sweet as witnessing an overconfident fool like Sigismund degenerate into a despondent wretch. His frustration is my elation. His despair, the question that I would spend the rest of my days answering if I could. As the battle unfolded, I could all but see the determination of loyal Hussites as they fixed the Taraznice guns to the wagons. The volleys of bolts and bullets that tore through Sigismund's ranks, and the torrents of blood that stained the once pure blanket of snow a deep scarlet. I could even picture Zavisha's wry grin as he mused that a blind man had taught him a crucial lesson that no one else could. To expect the unexpected. With Zavisha ransomed home to Poland, 
and Sigismund finally beaten back, I sense that Jan Hus's dream of a free, righteous Bohemia is close to becoming a reality. War turns fine men into circling ravens and makes tyrants of us all. The faithless falter, and new enemies rise as old ones fall. With Sigismund gone, I turned to smashing the few remaining pockets of royalist resistance. The Hussite dream of a Bohemia independent from the grip of foreign imperial powers was nearly achieved when misfortune struck us once more. Jealous of my success on the field of battle, and lusting after the power that I have justly earned, a faction of Hussites in Prague turned from the righteous path and made a deal with the devil. Now they march in league with the royalist armies and call on Sigismund to return. My Hussites are undefeated, but it would be a fool's errand to contend with internal dissent and invasion at once. I have appealed to my former comrades in Poland and Lithuania for help, and one man and his army have answered the call. Gigimantis Koribut, an ambitious young duke with a fierce love for our cause. We have come far already, and our mission to bring freedom, peace, and justice to our beloved homeland will not be stopped now. With our eastern allies by our side, we shall smite the royalist oppressors in the north, while our Hussite allies in Tabor strike out from the west. Once more, we shall unify this broken land and remind Sigismund that the Hussites are no mere peasant rabble to be oppressed and trampled. If he enters Bohemia again, he will face the wrath of men inspired by the soul of the martyr Jan Hus and see that Jan Shishka, warrior of God, still leads this unconquerable army. With the rival Hussite factions reconciled and the royalists defeated, nothing stands in our way. We will honor Jan Hus by building a Bohemia free from the corruption of the church in Rome and the avaricious talons of foreign emperors. Yet I, Jan Zizka, will not be there in earthly form to see it. To everything there is a season and the time for every purpose under heaven. And my time under the sun is nearly over. Even now, I can feel the bubonic plague coursing through my veins, swiftly stripping the warmth and life from my aged bones. Ye who are warriors of God, hear my dying wish. After I expire, you will flay the skin from my corpse and use it to build the drums to whose beat this army will march henceforth. When our enemies hear the ominous din of those drums and the joyous clamor of thousands of valorous Hussites singing battle hymns, they will know one dreadful truth. Jan Shishka still leads this army from beyond the grave. 